I'm going to work through one of the homework problems uh, in chapter 16 dealing with electrostatics. Uh, seems like a lot of people are having trouble with this chapter, so I'm going to give you guys some help on uh, this particular problem deals with um, uh, the scenario is there's two charged spheres, call them Q1 and Q2. And, and what the problem tells you is it tells you how far apart they are, call that D, and it tells you that they, there's a force between them, electrostatic force between these two charged spheres of 12 newtons in my case. But you don't know what Q1 and Q2 are individually. All you know is that the total charge on both of them, Q total, is 90 microcoulombs in my case. Okay, um, Yours is probably different. Uh, anyway, so this is chapter 16, deals with electrostatics, uh, and um, it seems reasonable that we're going to have to apply Coulomb's law. Okay, so the electrostatic force between these two charges using Coulomb's law is given by this, where, of course, K is 8.99 times 10 to the 9th newtons meter squared per Coulomb squared. Uh, and, okay, so uh, another thing we can write down is we don't know, well, we can't, we need to find Q1 and Q2. We can't use Coulomb's law, law alone to find Q1 and Q2 because they're both unknowns. We know F, we know K, we know D, but we don't know Q1 and Q2, so we can't solve for Q1 and Q2 with only this equation. But what we do know is that Q total is Q1 plus Q2. Okay, we can write that equation down. Uh, and so we can express Q2 as Q total minus Q1, okay, rearranging this equation, okay? So if we take this and plug it in up here for Coulomb's Law, then we end up getting an expression that looks like FK Q1. Instead of writing Q2, we write Q total minus Q1 divided by D squared, okay? So, We've combined these two expressions, and we end up with an equation, an expression, where there's only one unknown, Q1. Q total's known, D's known, K's known, F's known. So we should be able to solve this equation for Q1. And if we find Q1, we should be able to find Q2. Uh, so uh, the next step is to, all right, so to solve this algebraically, let's, let's rearrange this equation. So what I'll do is um, let's first multiply both sides by d squared. And um, actually, let's divide by k as well. Uh, so if we divide both sides by k and multiply by d squared, we end up getting this on the left-hand side. And actually, at the same time, let's distribute the q1 through this um, term right here. So on the right-hand side, we'll end up with q1 times q total minus Q1 times Q1, which is Q1 squared. Okay. The next thing I'll do is I'm going to move everything to the left-hand side here. Okay. So I will add Q1 squared to both sides, subtract um, Q1, Q total from both sides. And actually, let me write it like that, Q total, Q1. Subtract this from both sides. And that makes the left-hand side of the equation look like this and the right-hand side of the equation is zero. All right, so what we have here is a quadratic equation. It's an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Okay, where in our particular case, the thing that's playing the role of x is our unknown q1. Um, a, in our case, is one. The coefficient in front of the q1 squared term is one. B is minus q total. Don't forget the negative sign. It's part of the coefficient. C is f d squared over k. Okay, so it's a quadratic equation. We can find the roots of the, this quadratic equation, the, the solutions, the values for q1 or x that solve it by using the quadratic formula which is of the form x equals negative b 
plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Okay, so if I plug b and a and c in here, I can solve this for x, and I end up getting two answers. One where the radical, everything under the radical here is added, and another solution where everything under the radical here is subtracted from negative b. Okay, well, in this case, so, you know, these are these two roots. In this case, it's a really neat thing that happens. The two roots end up being your values of Q1 and Q2. And you can confirm that. When you get the two roots, you can add them together, and they should add up to Q total. So it's, it's a really neat thing. Uh, now, back up to specifically what we're looking for. Okay, in case A, we're, we're considering a force that's repulsive. Okay, if you remember from Coulomb's Law, uh, a repulsive force is one where F in Coulomb's law is positive. Okay, so to find the two Q1s and Q2s where the force is repulsive, we make sure we put positive 12 in here for F. Um, in Coulomb, using Coulomb's law, an attractive force is one that's less than zero. Okay, so to figure out Q1 and Q2, uh, when the two, and, and in this case, Q1 and Q2 are going to have opposite signs. Uh, for the repulsive case, actually, you know, both Q1 and Q2 will be positive because they have to add up to positive 90. And if they're repulsing each other, they have to have the same sign. Uh, in this case, if we plug negative 12 in for F down here, we'll end up getting a Q1 and a Q2, and one will be positive and the other will be negative. Um, indicating that they're going to attract one another, but they'll still add up the Q total. So that's it. I'm going to stop right there. I think I've taken this far enough, far enough, and I think you can get the rest of the way to the solution. Uh, and, um, of course, your numbers are different than mine, um, but this is, you know, the, the technique will be exactly the same for you. All right, I hope this helps.